Okay, I'm gonna tell you this story. This is why I came so like one with myself. So I really honestly do feel like one with the universe. Like I feel like I'm more than just a brain that's functioning with all these organs and like, you know, like it's really crazy. Like sometimes I feel like I'm, I can hear my blood like rushing through my body. Like it's really like if you really sit there in like silence, you can like, you can hear it sometimes. guys, how's it going? Uh, I am Miss Karen. I'm going to be taking over for Mr. Vernon. Um, and obviously this is my first day. It's not yours. You've been in school with each other for a long time. So yeah, we're not gonna be very formal. You just call me Miss Karen. Um, so that's, that's cool, I hope, with everybody. And I have no idea who you are and you have no idea who I am. So I'm gonna pass out some little cards right now and if you could pull out like a pencil or a pen or something. So just take like five minutes and fill out for me just a little brief synopsis of who you think you are. Anybody seen The Breakfast Club? Anybody? Anybody? I don't know. I don't really wanna know who I am. I just wanna be, be. <laughs> I just wanna be. <laughs> Can I just be? Do I have to define myself? I do say I'm a photographer. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I say I like taking photos. <laughs> I don't say I'm a photographer, you know? So like, I, can't, I haven't found my, haven't found my thing yet, but I will eventually. What is it that you want to say with photography? Like, why is that interesting to you? I don't know. I just, I don't know. Man, I don't know. I just. <laughs> You're like, stop it with the fucking questions. <laughs> no, it's because like everybody always asks me that and I'm just like, I really wish I could tell you, but sometimes I just like to fucking pick up a camera and just take a picture. Is that not enough? Like. And then I just started to say, this year we will be documenting our school's environment and the process we undergo as we open our arms to new students from across the district. While it's important not to feel that you are acting for the camera, they are interested in your authentic selves, I know that you will do your best to make a good impression and represent our school faithfully. Because the goal is not to turn everyone's attention to the new students um, and understand that they are all here because they're diverse. How do you think it's gonna go? I think it's gonna go great. I think everybody kind of sees a security guard uh, in whatever capacity, in an office building, in a school, as somebody who's just doing a job. Oh, they're probably, you know, they didn't make it in law enforcement or they just need to make a few bucks and they don't take it seriously. But what if you're a person who does take it extremely seriously? Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't do that here. Put them away. I'ma pull up in this swoop, then you're gonna dive in my pool, yeah. I just been one on you, you just been one on me, yeah. You wasn't supposed to cut off because I still gotta sing it. I gotta, I gotta sing it through. Well, you sound hesitate. You sound hesitated as hell.
because I am hesitant as hell. There's a big ass camera in my face. You supposed to act like it's not there. <laughs> It will be listened there, and I hear everything. All right, well, we'll turn it down. We... Oh gosh, yes, ma'am, we got it. All right. So when I don't have my keys, this is what I do. This is like, we came up with this plan. Is he up there? Hey, Graham. Easiest way to get in. This floor full of old people. That floor full of potheads and my grandma. Yeah, I got you. This is Mitch. This is my grandma. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm fine. So what you been doing? Uh, working in school. So what y'all got a class project? Uh, no, he's actually making a movie, like a legit movie. You know how that goes, so. On you? Describe your relationship with Shatira. <sighs> Why did I hit me with that question? I don't know. It's just like, we like we've liked each other back and forth, like, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and stuff. And every time I would ask her out as a girlfriend, she'd play me and be like, oh yeah, we can date. And then she would say no, and it would irritate me. And then she's played me multiple times. But honestly, like that is, that's somebody like you can trust. Like for sure, I'll, I'll say that. Like I know for a fact that I can trust her if I like needed advice or need to go for a friend, something like that. It's like she's a, she's a good person. She has a good like soul. Yeah. For sure. Like how else would you describe her? Awesome. Like, uh, intriguing. I don't know. There's a lot of beautiful people that are like really honest, and she's one of them. So I'd say that. All right, Grammy, I'll see you later. The, the peppermint is from the dollar store. You okay. Huh? No, you don't. I like the puffs. They're called puffs. Thank you. I'll okay, see sweetie. I'll catch up with you. We will. All right. Can we get two chais and then a hookah? Two chai? Yeah. Uh, and a medium? hookah too? Yes, yeah. Please. She was like, don't let them take pictures of you smoking hookah. You'll get us in trouble. <laughs> She's tripping. <laughs> Why don't you sip your coffee? It's not coffee. Mind your own business. It's not coffee. Don't say it's coffee. It's not coffee. Who's Robert? Robert is my boyfriend, um, and we've been together for three years. I love him and I care about him and I don't understand why it's so hard to be with somebody like yourself. <laughs> so we're both complicated in our own ways. Today was my day. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit rough. <laughs> it started with Markel. <laughs> he drives me nuts. No, no. I just uh, Markel in general, like relationships, friendships. People in general have been irritating me a lot lately. I would be honest in the beginning of the relation in, in the beginning of the relationship, I used to be super, really, really jealous, and now I just kind of just like let her go because I just know she's gonna be with me in the end of the day, so it's nothing really to worry about. I don't think I've necessarily lied to Robert, but I I don't feel like I've always been like myself like on like not honest but like myself i guess so like hiding what i feel if that counts as lying but like <sighs> tired of feeling <laughs> so you know the alley that every all like all the kids walk down somebody wrote that on there one time and i was like oh yep mood so, <laughs> kind of just took a picture of it.
All right, guys. If you need a couple more minutes, that's okay. You can go ahead and take it. For those of you that are done, can you come and turn in your papers? I got it, guys. And also, you may grab your phones. I'm sorry for taking them away. I'm a little grumpy today. <laughs> to make up for it, why don't you guys just uh, have, have some free time to yourselves? Cool? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So how many weeks can I expect testing to be. It changes on a yearly basis for us. I don't know if we could give a, a finite amount of time. But we there, couldn't do any test preparation for the test last year because nobody knew what was on the right. test. We had That's no right. idea. When he's saying it took six, six weeks of instructional time, he's talking about it actually literally took six weeks of instructional time, six weeks of classroom time for the kids just to take the test. It's been, for me, the big disappointment of the Obama administration has been what a disaster education's been. And I don't know any teachers, or really much of anybody who feel differently than yeah. that. And it pisses me off. Hi. That's all right. Go ahead. No, no, come on in. It's totally fine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm tired today. You're tired? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, I know. So that helps. How are your grades? My grades are good. Yeah? Yeah. OK. They're fine. So. And are you? How are you feeling about this school? I'm ready to go. You're ready I'm ready to, go? to leave. I just feel like there's like this thing on Facebook where it's like, look back on all your memories. And I made this status where um, I was like, what did I say? I was like, I just walked up to a group of predominantly white kids and I asked them if they knew if they knew who Trayvon Martin was. And um, they said no. And I asked them if they knew anything about police brutality, and they said no. And so I just, I don't know. Huh. It's becoming harder and harder uh, to talk about. Not, not much has changed. Not much has evolved <laughs> at all. Yeah, what if, what if I were to give you and Markel an opportunity to lead in the classroom together around race? I think it would be really, relations. it would be powerful, especially because we did, we did start the walkout together last year right. when That's Trayvon right. Martin was shot. Yeah. Do you think Markel would be interested in that too? Oh, like well, getting he would together love it. And he would love it. Coming up with a <laughs> lesson plan. He would and, literally be in love with it. And and I'm gonna need you to speak up and yeah. lead the class too. Yeah. All the time. I don't, I don't think it's. I mean, yeah, it's worth it, but for why? Why even start it now? Because what? In ten years, we're gonna be having the same conversation. It shit gonna change. But we can change within this community. I don't want my whole high school experience to be like, I was appropriated the whole time. Just squish, just condensed into this tiny little box of stereotypes and being this one person that all these white people know me to be. I want people to know, because if, if we give this small amount of people knowledge, we could do that everywhere. Like, imagine that, like literally imagine that. That'd be amazing. That'd be so great. All these people know that we are all the same inside. I hear so many people of color beg to be seen and beg to be known and beg to be heard. But it took him so much convincing, even though he wanted that. You know, I was down for it. I was ready, especially like with the whole election going on. I was. I was ready to talk about it with people, and um, he was just really hesitant because he didn't, I guess he maybe felt like he didn't have to explain himself to people, and you don't. Is there much censorship on the computers here? There's like, yeah. Yeah, like if I want to do something like this, I could go. Uh, maybe, maybe I like cooking. Maybe I want to find a nice duck breast recipe, right? Maybe I got some duck breast and I want to cook that. Oh look, pan roasted duck breast at Food Network. Oh no, it's blocked. Pan roasted duck breast is blocked because keyword breast. You know? Because that makes sense. But if I go to like a different website, like. World War I guns, sometimes it's blocked guns, sometimes it isn't, you know?
the majority of the teachers are liberal and the majority of the students are liberal, but we have teachers that are openly conservative and students that are openly conservative. So I feel like ratio-wise it's right. They also sort of feel attacked just by being surrounded by so many liberal people, so they get sort of aggressive with their conservativeness and sort of alt-right with it, which then makes the liberals get even more mad at them, if that makes sense. Oh my god. <laughs> she emailed me the song. She was like, I think you'll like this. And I was like, oh god. Because kids have always been miscreants and juvenile delinquents and they've been truant and there's been fights in schools and other problems. We've had violence in schools throughout uh, as far back as we've had schools. I had read a story many years ago, yeah, I can't remember the magazine, but they were interviewing a young school teacher up in a part of Alaska that had Kodiak bears, biggest bear mammal right. on the planet, I mean monsters. And she had this little one room schoolhouse and she said, we're, we're in bear country, we know it, they're vicious. So when they go out, they said to go in recess, every day there are four students that are assigned a task. One faces north, one faces south, one faces east, one faces west. They don't participate in recess, they simply watch the trees in the surrounding area. If they see a bear, they say there's a bear, we get the kids inside the school. And uh, the comment was, well, what if the bear gets in? And she had this closet with a large caliber rifle in it. And she said, if the bear gets in, that's what I do. That's the solution. What we need to think about in our society and in America overall is what do you do when the bear gets in? Right. I kind of have to pee. Let's go. Damn it. You always got to pee. He always got to pee. He's like, I have to pee. No, you don't. Hold it. <laughs> Yo, I thought you were gnarly. Yeah, but I'm not about to piss on myself. Just hold it. So apparently my parents don't like it when I go out so, of the house at night. Free Bateman. come back in the morning. This is like the symbol for it. I hate it. It's like free Bateman. It's like that. Now I'm in trouble. Yeah. I'm on house arrest. I can't go anywhere. Quesadilla. Cooking in the kitchen. That's so much better. That's so much better. Yo, it's just the way it hits. It's so much better. But I like wasn't laughing. So that's how you know it was serious. Yeah, you were. No, not when Shatira was oh, crying. No, I was like, here. shit, what should I do? You probably should have stayed away just a little bit longer till she fucking broke up with that dude. Because you know there's gonna be some fucking beef there. I don't work Now it's like, I think that you should just fucking go up to her, which I think you already have. It's just like, tell her like, oh, you know, let's just be on good terms. Like, it's not worth, like, you guys having this little beef where we're in the same room. Not even this Literally, year. don't even Bro. let her talk. Just tell her. Just be like, okay. You can't We do are that. good. You can't Period. do that. Yes, you can. Just be, fucking say, we are good. There's no beef. I just don't want to fucking fight you anymore. You're right. I'm wrong. Who fucking cares? But, let's just be done. But the, I'm not arguing. I'm probably going to do that. Okay? You should But do you don't that. know, like, there's history more than just, like, this year. You like her. Yeah, yeah, I, like have. I she, have. I have. And she likes she you too. Together? Because she has a boyfriend. She has a crazy ass fucking boyfriend. We're but like, you guys like game. each other. I don't know why she doesn't just drop Robert and you guys just fucking be together. I don't get that. There's a bunny. I did contemplate a lot that. Uh, we were not going to end up being together after senior year. What's up with you, Robert? Just still friends. I mean, we still hang out a lot because it's kind of like hard to break up after three years and be like, okay, bye, <laughs> adios. You were never part of my life. So, yeah, we still hang out a lot, but not as much anymore. Hello. You interrupted my interview. Not always. <laughs> yeah, you do. You tend to do that a lot. Are you Mike? Mm hmm Are we gonna talk? Talk about what? <laughs> Are we gonna talk? No. <laughs> I was in the middle of an interview, and you just kind of rolled up. <laughs> what? You know what I mean, though. Oh, got you. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus. He's more stressful than Robert is. Are you attracted to him at all? Oh, God. <laughs> I was not expecting that question. I mean, 
I find him attractive and I was going to pursue him in a relationship, but he done fucked that up. So. Are you nervous about today at all? Yes, because I'm scared I'm like, I don't know, I don't keep up to date like on current events because I don't have cable, so like I don't watch news or anything and I only see like news on Facebook and stuff like that and then half the time it's like fake, so. Uh, current events, it's actually, what are some racial current events going on in the United States right now? We're not doing so. <laughs> Let me think about that. American Civil Liberties Union, American Current Event Analysis, Racial Profiling. Oh, period. I got this. Let's go. All right, welcome, welcome, everybody. Yo. How's it going? No. Good. Public speaking. Awesome. I know. Um, Markel Shatira. Yeah. Class is yours. All right, y'all. Obviously, I'm the only black student in this class, so <laughs> we about to do something today. Okay, well, let's um, start a conversation like that. <laughs> we're gonna talk about race. Now, I know a lot of y'all are uncomfortable about it, so let's conversate. What's going on in this school right now? Nobody? Nobody. Don't raise your hands, just talk. Conversate. Um, I think that's a pretty hard question to ask. Why? Just because, I mean, it's not like we're not going to say anything if we see a racist act or if, like, the, if a conversation comes up, but I think why most people didn't raise their hand was because maybe it's not, like, it's not something we're just talking about, which it should be, but it's just, it's, right. yeah. Um, how do you guys feel about one specific teacher? You might know who I'm talking about. Um, who isn't supposed to share their political views with us, but she is Republican and she is voting for Donald Trump. I feel like you can't really get mad at her when there's another teacher who's got a poster of Obama on his wall. It's like, you can't have it both ways. You can't be like, it's okay if you agree with me, and it's not okay if you don't agree with me. You know what I'm saying? Your phone keeps buzzing. You got something to uh, show us? Kind of a little I feel conversation. <laughs> You guys are about to get back into here. It's just That's me. grabbing. Not today. I'm uh, Mark Allen in the class today. That's racist, dude. How? That is, yo, Miss Karen. Yes. You see what they be sending in your class? You don't want, you want to see? Look. Uh, actually, Look. cell phones need to get put away. Why aren't you guys getting ready for your test next week? Miss Karen, I, I do suggest you go ahead and Get the ball rolling on, on test prep for the rest of this thing. The I'd love to, Markel. You know what? I appreciate Markel, your suggestion. let me tell you something. Either you can come and talk to me after school mm -hmm. of your own volition because you want to have dialogue about this, mm -hmm. or I can make sure you come and see me after school. Do you understand the difference? I understand That's the difference. The I understand. That's enough. And I'd, I'd really love to talk to you after class. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks, I mean, everybody. I was upset that the principal kind of came in and fucked up the whole conversation but there was some tension between me and Markel because we didn't really know what we were gonna end up being or what was gonna happen. Mm. I'm here, so go ahead and say what you gotta say. You got the floor. You got why, the floor. Why, why, I, I, why told you, floor. I told you we was gonna talk. You were the one that came no, to me first and was like, no. let's talk. I thought what happened was real, but apparently you don't. I just want to be on good terms, that's all. That's all. I'm, well, Mikkel, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. Like, I really don't. Like, I'm tired of receiving messages talking about, oh, fuck you. <laughs> Basically, in all context. I am, because that breaks my heart a lot. Every time. You really think this is just about you being the one broken hearted? I'm not saying I didn't fuck up. I said that just the other night. I said that last night, in fact. You did. Yeah, I know you, I did. You did. So you want me to apologize? That's what you want? That's what I said. OK. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I apologize for everything that I've done to you. Like I say, you're not even going to accept it or think it's real anyway. I said OK. You didn't even say OK. You looked I away. I said OK. 
Oh, how Damn, he heard it. Jesus. I've only ever really had like a good relationship with one teacher and I still failed her class but <laughs> she also had like the same personality as Miss Karen so in class Markel sort of like steamrolled you dude yeah I know <laughs> okay <laughs> and what about that um, well, Markel's stupid. What do you mean by that? <laughs> when he said that he was the only African American in that class, like, I was a little dumbfounded and I was like, me too. It kind of caught me off guard because I was like, they would push you in a way that wasn't babying. Like, they'd be like, oh no, like, you got this. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know you're messing up. And I know I need somebody that's going to be like, tighten the fuck up and get your shit done. You know, and that's, I feel like it's because that's how my mom was with me. What's your favorite sweet thing to eat? Favorite <sighs> sweet thing to eat. Favorite. Okay, well, here's the crazy thing. Okay. So I don't really like eating chocolate. Oh. It's not like, it hasn't been a thing for me for a long Who time. Who are you? I know, I know. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Are you Because my mom's like a chocolate-holic. Like. Well, chocolate's amazing. <laughs> yeah. What if, what if you actually really cared and, you know, you've taken that responsibility on to the point where if someone of these kids gets injured or hurt or, God forbid, killed in this school, then I didn't take every action possible to protect them, whatever the case may be, um, it's on my back. I mean... I think there is an, at least a, a metaphor in the lifting thing of like, you've got to take it a little bit further if you are going to be that protector. What are you going to do? Just have a cell phone, call 911, wait with everybody else if something bad happens, you know? So there it is. I can open it up. And it is an unloaded firearm. Glock 19, nine millimeter. And have you ever had to use it? Had to use it? No, yeah. no, never, no. Thank God, no. I mean, what would be a scenario where you would potentially foresee using it? Um, how many times do we need to see these kind of things happen around the world to know that the threat is there? And I mean, if you do have opposing groups, somebody who would take on the role of defending or protecting a group of people, it would be nice to be able to be that person. I don't know if it's a completely narcissistic thing, but it would, it would be nice to think that your intention worked, you know what I mean? The government was responsible for protecting the citizens' rights to religion, but Muhammad Ali brought attention to the failures that the government had in protecting those rights. Muhammad Ali is a bold icon that continues to be influential everywhere. This was the draft of a legend. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks for showing tried. it to me. I think there's, yeah, there's a reason why I had to show you that. I just wanted to like, so you could understand where I was coming from and why I got upset. It kind of, it doesn't, I mean, of course I didn't get drafted, but it gives like some context of like where I get inspired from and like why that upsets me, the way she reacted. 
Like, come on. It upset me too. Like, let's be clear about that. That yeah. it really upset me too. Yeah. That she shut you down in that way. Yeah. Right? Res respect is one of the number one things my dad <clears throat> taught me. Did you feel respected by Miss G? Oh hell no! I felt like she was. I felt like she looked at me and was like, "This little aunt needs to sit down." So. I don't know. Well, the outcome of what that situation should be is like literally she should be listening because you don't want to mute a voice that actually has something to say. I think you need to tell her that. Yeah, I agree. And I think I, and I, I think, think, if, I think you, like, if you admire Muhammad Ali for sticking up for his rights and his beliefs and going to jail for it, Markel, you're right. not going to go to jail for this. Yeah, you, you know? Do have a point. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I know that, but. Like the f like when I first find out something, I'm obviously too pissed off to even yeah. talk about it. So that's why I'm saying like it takes me a couple hours to calm down, just figure out what I want to say, and then yeah. So it's not like a big mess. Like, but you never do say what you need to say. Like you just sit there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just sit there because I feel like you're just gonna get defensive about it. And like, I mean, I. Yeah, it does irritate me that you get defensive over him because I'm pretty sure I've done so much more for you than him. And I'm not, I never deny that. I never ever deny that. I just don't want to see you fall in love with somebody else. Like, that's going to hurt me too much. So I'm just going to be like, nah, I'm done with this. Fuck this shit. Like, I just don't want to. You, you get what I'm saying. Wow. You know, you just up and leave? I mean, wouldn't you, like, say we were but single? But when I was talking to Markel, you didn't leave. Okay, but that's because I had this feeling. <laughs> that shit would not... Well, obviously shit would not work, but... Exactly. The f key to loving somebody is forgiveness. Exactly, and that's And what you I forgive thought. no matter what. That's not a grasshopper, that was a leaf. <laughs> hey. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Not in the best mood. Um, well, I'm glad to see you come by. Give me just one second to finish this little sentence here. So, how are you feeling since not, I saw you last? Not good at all. Okay. I'm feeling disrespected. I'm feeling like, honestly, you don't care. I don't under, like, I don't know if you understand what me and the students go through in this school and what we put up with, but I feel like there's just, you're here and I'm here. We're on two totally different levels, two totally different spectrums. I understand what's going on more than you do with the social life. Tell me it's what's like happening. There's micro, there's insults, there's harassments, there's jokes constantly, nonstop. Oh, that's some black thing would say. White kids are saying the N word. For what? It's like we get here, we're, oh, you gotta do the test, you gotta do this, you gotta do the curriculum, you just focus on that. But there's another layer to this whole school. There is. You are absolutely right that in a lot of ways, this school has not been prepared for your needs. And it's not all about me. I'm not focused on me. I'm open-minded. I'm thinking about everybody else. I'm thinking Markel, about the I know you're generation. not focused on you, and that's actually what I'm asking you to kind of shift a little bit. But I don't now, want hold on. Exactly. I want to make sure that in the first year that we put our arms around a more diverse student body, you're we worried. don't have a dip. Wait, you know why? Wait, 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 wait. Do you understand wait, 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 why? Wait, wait, wait. You're worried that the minorities are going to create a dip? No. See, this is, why I, this is where you lose me because we're not on the same page with that. I don't understand why. And if you guys aren't going to care, then I'm sorry. I just, I'll do Markel. it on my own. Markel, no hold way. on. There's hold no on. Way. There's nothing about this conversation that should lead you to think that I don't care. I care about all of it. Can you please have a seat? Please. It doesn't seem like you do. You're responsible for coming here to school, thinking about your own success, and making that happen, 
okay? I don't want you to get distracted by a whole lot of things that don't necessarily need your specific Do we have anything going on Thursday night? Oh my gosh, buddy. Yay! Careful, careful, careful. Um, Yay! Thursday night the 9th. No. Okay. Let's see what I can do. Whoa! Yeah, pretty good. Look, you got this line, and this line, and this part of the line, but look, it's missing this part going like that. Okay. Wait, 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 over here. Finish up your four. No, Mommy, actually I want to do um. Are you going to practice a four again? Mm -hmm. Okay. This trial is the biggest load of... Oh, for crying out loud. No, but I mean, who Marquel's pussy whipped. Okay, but I'm not as pussy are. whipped as him. Oh, no, his, listen, his ass is whipped. His ass is whipped. Oh, my ass, listen, my ass is whipped. But we're, listen, listen, listen. We're all whipped, but we're not as whipped as this dude. I bet we Think about that. You think about that. Okay. Okay. What? Hold on, hold on. What? What'd you say? Yo, what? What you say? What was your joke? You I heard the N word. So I said you were whipped. Ah, no? Whoa, 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 hold on. That's just not real. Take that shit back. It's not real. Take that shit back. Okay. I take it back. Take that, take that shit real. back. No, 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 not you. Not you, you because that is not your word. Like, this is what you're talking about, bro. Man, put him on the back. Man, fucking tired of this shit. Hey, hey! 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 I thought like kind of the crazy thing about um, the participant was that like he just did such simple things and I was like, like I guess art doesn't have to be complicated. So, I don't know. I feel like as a photographer you only stand out if you do things differently. And I'm not sure I do things differently in photography. I think I do the same mediocre shit that everybody else does in photography. I just want to be more experimental with my work and I don't know exactly how to do that. Shit. And then three and a half ounces of this. Like that. And a shot of this. Never taken a shot before. So I guess we'll see how this goes. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. What's the moment of truth? This, right here. We'll see if I can get the darn thing on. All right, lights off. Is it time? Ah, oh shit. <laughs> this is not happening. Nope. <laughs> I don't know how people do this. I do not know how people do this. Yeah, let me turn it back on. How was it being suspended? I slept all day and cleaned and just like cleaned the house. I like, washed the bathroom and swept, vacuumed everywhere, and I went to work. Oh, cool. Let me turn it back on. <laughs> it's the problem with it though, it's distorted, and that's how I've been trying to figure the fuck out. I might have to just re-record that shit. White on white on the Bronco. Niggas go hot like Django. Fuck with the Exodus, I don't want runner up. Picture bitch licking up, picture with Deprecate. No chance, no runner up, no chance, no runner up. Start licking this and you play me, you fucking up, yeah. 
I'm a product of my environment. Like we do what we have to do in certain situations. That's just kind of how my upbringing is. So you have to push a person to that level to where they don't care that much. I don't care, I can't be punked anymore. We'll see what happens. I might, I could, I could be in a different position in two years when I'm in college and be like, I'm dropping out just to focus on music and take off. That's what a lot of rappers really do. So it was the day after the election. Everybody on Facebook was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it was like haywire, and I, like, didn't want to go on there. I did probably didn't go on there for, like, a couple days. Like, I just, you know, like, I tried to keep my spirit up, but at the same time, I was like, damn, like, racism won. Once again. What are you going to say? White privileged America. So that was crazy. I watched it with my grandma. She's been sick and been living with us, and she was just like terrified. She was like, I do not want to live in this society, and that like brought me to tears. I kind of just, I mean, I started a couple, I did a rally with Jumper, and that was cool. It was really motivational because everybody was like crying on that day, and we were like, we need to get the people together so they can get their feelings out. And so we rallied up the whole school in the rotunda and had like a little, I don't want to say walk out, but a little like conversation. And it was a, it was a grip of kids. Basically, everybody was like, oh, let's do a walkout. And then Markel loves to think he's in charge of it. So <laughs> him and Jumper were like, oh, we're going to do a walkout. And then Markel got mad. Come on in. So you tell them really that they're beautiful. fucking weird. Just smile the anger away. <laughs> I feel like there were just so many people that that the principal had no choice but to allow the rally, you know? I mean, all the security guards were very tense, like standing around like as if something was about to happen and people were crying, people were sobbing. I don't like the dude, but this is a little overboard, you know? It's not the end of the world. Okay. What, four years, and then it goes back to normal, right? What's the worst you can do? Feels weird editing this picture. What'd you say to him? I mean, I, I was walking by, they were talking about being whipped, and I was like, whipped, ha, ha, ha. Um, I made a joke. He, did what he did and turned it into a thing where he's the victim instead of me making a joke, you know? Apparently now I'm not allowed to make jokes, only he's allowed to make jokes. If I make a joke, I'm like a Nazi or a white supremacist or something. I never like talking politics because I don't know anything. I don't know about politics, you know? Like I know like what the media tells me, but I don't know about the policies and all that shit, you know? But I don't know, like it's just dumb to ask me that because like the day that he got elected, everybody was like crying. And I didn't, I didn't cry at all. I, I thought it, I thought it was darkly funny. I don't know how it's gonna affect me. And I don't even know if anybody knows how it's gonna affect anybody. Like right now, it's like school and like girls and like social stuff and it's always been that way, you know? Like act natural, Sarah. All right, back to the, back to the interview. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm mic'd up right now, but once we go to the car, I'm gonna be not mic'd. <laughs> so you're on camera, but don't act weird, okay? Just act, just act cool, okay? Do a cool walk when we walk this way. Oh, funny seeing you here. Markel and like Shatira is the main character, and I'm like a side character, I think. But this is the first time I've ever, like, he's just filmed me. People started being weird. People started acting all in public. They started thinking they could be slick. They started calling you the N-word when you was walking down. Just a whole bunch of stuff. I think 
like some people just thought it was, they were more comfortable with being um, prejudiced and discriminating. So. That is so terrible. And how something is wrong. Uh, and the current thing about how they were going to come here and stand up here and tell you how O.J. Simpson was going to disguise himself. He was going to put on a knit cap and some dark clothes and he was going to get in his white Bronco and this recognizable person and go over and kill his wife. That's what they want you to believe. That's, yeah, that's, that's what they want you to believe. So, this girl. He was going to put on a knit cap and some dark clothes and get in his white Bronco and this recognizable person and go over and kill his wife. That's what they want you to believe. Oh, wait, man, I came, I felt like it came in way early. Man, when you win... When I actually first got on stage and had the mic and I had a DJ, you know what I'm saying? It's a show, but it was more like, well, you gotta start somewhere. You gotta do something with it. So, I, I, you know, they're not bad shows. They're just, they're, they're stepping stones, they're baby steps, you know? Life is short, so we ain't got that much time. You gotta make do with what you got. And they play some cool shit. That thing is bigger than a tablet. Yeah. Just talking to you. Put it down. Yes. Who do you think I'm talking to? Who else has a phone that's like the size of an encyclopedia? I mean, I like to learn. <laughs> so we're talking about a fascist regime. <clears throat> and uh, so if they started making people wear bands in this country, denoting what denomination they were, what color they were, what creed they were, how they identified, would that lead you to some sort of protest to do something? And it wouldn't have to be violent. There are lots of different nonviolent resistance movements. I mean, Sophie Scholl and the White Rose in Nazi Germany being one of them. She could have kept completely silent. She didn't have to act. She was only 21 years old. She was only 21. And she knew, she knew the risks. Of, of distributing these leaflets. She knew that she could be caught at any moment, and they were. Because in January of 1943, the University of Munich had this huge riot because Stalingrad had just been, well, the Germans had just been defeated in Stalingrad. So University of Munich, which was full of artists and, and critical thinkers, just erupted with these huge riots. This is district safety and security. Your school is going into lockdown. Uh, this is not a drill. All students, please report immediately to the nearest class. All right, guys. You know the drill. Let's go. This half the room up against these filing cabinets. Are you guys okay over there? I'm sure it was either a threat that somebody made or there was a fight where a threat was made. It had to do something with a threat because otherwise they wouldn't have put us in a lockdown. I texted my mom and I told her I love her and, you know, I waited. Photography is all about capturing moments that are never gonna happen again and, um, that's what I did with the photo of Miss Karen. It would have been crazy if something were to happen and then somebody would have found my camera and, and you know, it would have been kind of dope to have that be the last picture I ever took. We all go into panic mode. We have no idea, we have no idea if we have an active shooter on campus or if there is a direct threat to my class, to one of my students. We have no idea. What the heck is coming down the pike?
Yeah, yeah. No, I can totally make that happen. So a happy hour? Deal? Promise? Don't flake on me, bitch. <laughs> no, I know you wouldn't. All right. We'll get together then. We'll talk more about this nonsense. I'm scared. I am, I am, I'm nudging. Yeah, well, I also shouldn't be put on like some stupid probation or being, you know, told that I can't, Sue. Sit. <laughs> Animals are the best thing in the world. But do you know why? Here's why. They don't, ju they don't judge you. They don't judge you for anything. What are your thoughts when teachers just disappear? Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I just think it's unfair. Like, we should, we, I think I have a right to know. I don't think it's fair at all that she's gone, honestly. Especially if, like, they can't, they're just coming up with stories to keep her gone, basically. They've probably wanted her gone for a long time. She's a very outspoken person, and um, not a lot of people like that. Conversations were supposed to be the solution. I feel like that whole conversation kind of stopped after she got fired, and I feel like everybody is stuck. We're just stuck. I told you I was gonna laugh. I can't keep it. Why together. are you gonna laugh? Because it's just awkward. <laughs> For me. Why is it awkward? Because we just don't talk anymore. Our last conversation was when I told you it wasn't fair that you were trying for me now when you could have been trying uh, yeah, for me. Oh, yeah, that early. was high key. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. I remember that shit, yeah. And then we never talked after that because you got up and walked away. You don't do anyone any good if you're doing a Hail Mary run, like the charge of the light brigade up against an active shooter. So what you need to do is you have to make sure you've got some tactics and some ability to either contain or track the movements uh, that it's time to act. You've got to do something. You've got to either neutralize that threat. You've got to have that wherewithal to do it. Here's the other thing you have to consider, too, is could you shoot a child? That's a very difficult thing for you to think about if you're carrying a gun and working in a school. Can you shoot a child as a person responsible for the safety and well-being of children? You've got to be the adult in the room. So what you need to do is you need to daydream and think. No different than football players or baseball players or anything else with a pop fly. You may be working out in left field and never get a ball the entire game, but that one time you do, you've practiced. 
and you've thought it through and you've brainstormed and you've daydreamed about what's going to happen if that ball comes flying your way, how you're going to handle that. This is the most devious thing I've ever done in my life. For real? Yeah. I've never snuck out. I don't smoke, I don't drink. I've been grounded more than a handful of times, but I've never been suspended or expelled. You know, I feel like there have been a lot of times in the past few years where I haven't said what I should have said, and I don't want to let things well, you know, in terms of like something that really affects me, I don't want to let it be. And um, everybody's always like, oh, kids don't watch the news. Kids don't care about what happens nowadays. Kids don't this, they don't that, they don't pay attention. All they do is pay attention on their fucking phones and yada, yada, yada. And um, I just don't want to sit back anymore. If I would call it a story. I think I'd call it a memory, to be quite honest, because it's not it's not something that's made up. Yeah, my life isn't isn't a story, it's more of a memory. I feel like I kind of left the old Shatira in that school. I, I feel like I'm more afraid of the future than I am of like death at this point because I'm like, damn, I'm 18 now. Like the shit really happens. Like you actually like continue living. <laughs> like, I guess like all I thought after high school was like death. <laughs> but now like I actually have to go out and live my life and be 30 flirty and thriving. Like I don't want to do that. I've never planned on that. I've only seen it in the movies and I don't feel like it's realistic. Mm -hmm.